Hey, what's going on? It's V from V Love and Tara. Hope you're doing well. Today's pick a card reading is on who you will marry. These do well on my channel and people love, love, love them. So I thought I would oblige and bring more to the channel. So pile one, you have blue. Pile number two, you have the pink heart. And pile number three, you have the green heart. If you're new, please subscribe. If not, thank you for returning. If you want more pick a cards, I do have a playlist. So if you're new to pick a cards, we basically go with our intuition, which pile do you feel holds your message one two three if you want to watch the full video awesome if not there are timestamps to each pile and all you have to do is click over and it'll skip right to your pile so um yeah pause the video connect with your intuition and meditate meditate with your yourself first before you make a selection all right so thank you so much for being here and i hope that you are doing well by the time you see this let's dive into the who's who will your future spouse be? Who will you marry? Pile number one, you're first. All right, pile number one, if you chose the blue heart, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to your reading. Hope you're doing well. Please subscribe if you're new, and if you're not, thank you so much for always coming back for more fun. So let's dive into this. We're going to get into your who. Who will you marry? Who? If you're looking for what marriage would be like, check out my pick a card that just went up a few days ago. Now we're going to step into the who. Who's the energy that's coming in that you're going to spend your married life with? Let's figure that out. I'm so excited. I love doing these. I'm going to be using my two who decks. I have the occupations who and the who that has interests, personalities, age brackets, signs, skin tones, and hair types. All right, pile number one, please help me. Who will you marry? Pile number one's energy only. Who will you marry? Pile number one. You have lights here. You have travel. Who will you marry? Pile number one. Pile number one. Who will you marry? Pile number one. You have politics. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I was priming this this pile, and I was like pulling cards, but I did I couldn't connect with them for some reason. So then I you said you know what? Let me connect more. Let me sage. Let me uh, restart and. But before I did that, the cards that came out were, were light hair and politics. Actually, I'm going to fast forward that part. You'll get to see it right now. So as you can tell, uh, when I was priming your cards, the politics came out in another deck. Um, in my ho my occupation deck and the light heart hair did come out already, so that's interesting. So this person probably works in the law, like maybe they are a legal secretary, maybe they are a lawyer, a judge, a mayor. Who knows? This person probably likes to work, um, you know, in in an office, like corporate office or a law, you know, law office. I'm sorry, yeah, law office. A uh, water sign. Water sign, and you got real estate. All right. Pile number one, who will you marry? These, are, these decks are for sale. If you're interested, we have plenty of copies. Check out my Etsy shop. I also have them on eBay. And you have spiritual. Oh, my gosh, that's funny. But yeah, when I was priming your cards, like I said, the spiritual list came out, and now here we are with another deck, spiritual. Amazing. You got full body. And top, you got building maintenance. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I'm I'm tired of I'm tired of this. <laughs> I'm tired of putting my cards back. They come out for a reason. All right, this came out again when I was priming your cards, pile one. Building maintenance. Oh, that's insane. All right, so you have a lot of duplicates here. So um, I feel like yeah, basically this the person that you're gonna be married, they could have a high end job, high paying job. They probably work with their hands. You got real estate. I'm getting like working with their hands, like you know, on the field. Um, you got building maintenance. Yeah, traveling, traveling for work out, out on the field, but working with the hands, like uh, I don't know, like um, like yeah, like building, like building something. You know, you got real estate, you got building maintenance. So this person could work with um, yeah. I'm I'm getting like this person works for a corporate office. They probably push paperwork, but they're out in the field a lot. They travel for work a lot. This person, uh, I'm getting hands-on energy. It could be that they, you know, they bring their laptop with them and they deal with people 
face to face, they're hands on, helping people sign documents, helping people, um, you know, enroll in their benefits or enroll in uh, whatever X, Y, and Z. Um, I can see this person doing it globally. Like this is someone who loves to, you know, travel, who loves to meet people, meet and greet. You got the politics here, and this tells me that they, I feel like they have, yeah, like a high paying job, a, a demanding job. Um, that's what the politics reminds me of. Or it can be someone who's like, you know, going to school to be a lawyer, or someone who's working up the, the chain to become a judge or to become, yeah, to become a lawyer. Or maybe they work, you know, uh, putting the voting ballots together in, in, in the courthouse. You know, maybe they help people sign their marriage certificates, you know, stuff like that. I just feel like this person, they're, they're very good at, um, I think they're very intelligent, number one. Uh, number two, I really feel like they just love being, they love being, being around a lot of people. They love being, that's why I'm getting hands-on energy, and then we got the water sign. So they're very passionate about their job. They're very passionate about what they do. They're passionate about who they come in contact with. Um, they, they just, I think they love working with paper as well, filing papers, signing papers. Um, oh my gosh, yes. And light hair tells me this person could have light hair right now. Maybe it's it's going gray or they were born with light hair, but it could be darker, much much darker now that they're older. But, um, and this tells me crown chakra energy, uh, you know, intelligence again. But also very intuitive, very spiritual because you got the water sign. I'm getting the crown chakra like the hangs man. You got that big bulb, the light bulb all around the hangman in the tarot. And then you have this water sign. So I'm getting like, um... Queen of Cups energy, the High Priestess, and then you got this um, spiritual card here. Oh, and you also got Astrology and you got Spiritualist. So, oh my gosh, let me show you what, the, what those look like. Um, they came out when I was priming your cards. So, Astrologist, um, yeah, the Astrology or Astronomy, uh, it's like somebody up in space. So, this person could be, you know, someone who travels a lot, like I said. Yeah, look, we got Spiritualist, yeah, Tower Reader here, Diviner. Um, I'm getting that with the High Priestess and the Queen of Cups, like someone who's very psychic or intuitive. Yeah, here we go. Astrology. So this person probably travels for a living. You see, the, the Earth is right there. And then you had um, the travel here. So I feel like they either are always about, they're not like, they don't stay stuck in, in a building for too long. They probably work, you know, locally, but then they, they always take it off to travel for work. Or maybe they just love being uh you know they love tr just adventuring they love to what's it, what's it called uh, vacationing around the world on their you know spiritual uh, on their on their downtime all right so that's somebody who you're gonna be marrying let's let's type let's get more into this energy um oh but i shouldn't have put my cards back it's funny it's like i put my i shuffle my cards i get ready and then I'm like, nope, can't connect. And then I put it back, right? I shuffle it again, and then they come out again. I'm like, what the heck? Why did I put them back? Because I wanted to show you. We have duplicates, but that's all right. I'll just fast forward that part. You can see me pulling those cards out. Okay, you have I Foster Community. Oh, my gosh, that's what I'm saying. This person loves to be around a lot of people. This person is like a people, uh, a people, not a people pleaser, but um, for the people. This person is very good at socializing. They probably socialize a lot for work. They probably... Just love being immersed in different cultures, different walks of life. I can see them working in a public setting, um, even globally, like dealing with them online as well, having conferences online, offline. I foster community. I am committed to participating in the success of all those around me. That's exactly what I was saying. So very sociable. You have, um, I honor my body. The Manuka flower entrusts me to take care for myself. I live and believe in her reminder of self-care. So this person could be very well balanced, very spiritual. That like, a, thank you. That's what I was saying. They're like a very. Oh my gosh, I'm getting Empress energy as well. You got the flowers here, right? And then you also have the Queen of Cups. I'm sorry, the um, the the water sign, which I don't know. I'm just getting like very um, like full in the heart. Like they they either are either fulfilling their purpose and they're they're feeling really passionate about what they're doing and you know helping people. I'm getting, I'm not, not sure that, oh my gosh, what is the Empress? I forget what she is. I forget what sign she is, but um, I'm just getting that motherly 
you know, energy of just wanting to take care of people, wanting to help people, for the people, like a humanitarian. I'm getting Mother, Mother Gaia, Empress, Queen of Cups, that kind of energy. All right. Who will you marry? And, it, it, you know, it's not... It, it, just because we're getting feminine energy doesn't mean you're going to go marry a female if that's not what you're looking for. You know, this can come in masculine energy or masculine form as well. You know, a man with this type of energy. Which, you know, is awesome because that means he's tuned into his heart space, you know. He's tuned into his emotions. He's not afraid to, to tap, tap into his feminine side. Awesome. I am surrounded by love. My life is full of people who cherish and adore me. That is... And adore me. There is value in my existence. My friend, this is what I'm saying. This person is, I would say this person has a very good job and everybody knows this person. Like, um, you have a problem? Okay, dial 1-800, blah, 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 blah. And you'll get right to that, right right to your, your person. Like, you gonna, you, your person's going to be well-known or they're working t their way towards it. Um, they're probably going to have a lot of friends, too. So, and, and I can see that because they like to travel a lot. So they probably meet a lot of people wherever they go. I live with eternal hope. I believe I can endure great sorrow and emerge stronger than any transformation. So this person could be on the spiritual journey. That's what I'm getting, friend. That's what I'm getting. And look what you have here. Sigil, witch, weaving numbers and symbols. So they probably push paper for work. They probably push numbers. Maybe they're an accountant. Maybe they work in in the courthouse, you know, pu push, pulling, putting, I'm, I'm doing like audits or tax, t you know, tax, I don't know, I don't know, like the IRS stuff, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying like a high-end job, I'm not saying that that's here, but just pushing paper, important documents, um, and then you have Green Witch, Foraging Whole Foods and Earth, that's what I'm saying, Mother Gaia is coming through, this person could be very, very good at cooking, yep, honking horn, cooking, uh, hands on. That's why I'm getting hands on because they are probably very good in the kitchen. They're probably very good at growing their own garden. They're probably very good at um, bringing things like you know, touching things like the Midas touch, bring, putting their hands on something and watching it flourish. Whether you know they're holding hands, helping you sign your documents, at, or and helping you get your stuff done, or holding your hand, helping you plant some seeds in the garden, helping you learn how to cook. You know, this person is like the mother figure, father figure, perhaps. Um, Queen of Cups, very motherly, fatherly energy. Empress, Emperor energy. Freaking awesome. Alright, so let me pull these cards. So this is my uh, my Witch Becomes Her Oracle. They're at first sale, 53 cards of beautiful witches, and they all have their own energies. I use that to help me describe what we're getting into when it comes to the Who's. And I have my Who decks as well for sale on Etsy and eBay. Okay, let me shuffle. So, tell me more about the person you're going to be marrying. Tell me more about this person you're going to be marrying, pal. Number uno. Who will you marry, pal? Number one. You have... See? Nature. Mother Nature, Mother Gaia, Empress, Emperor. I feel like this energy is just so nurturing. Humanitarian. I'm telling you, my friend. You go to this person and you feel so invited, so welcomed, so warm, so cared for. So, you know, like someone being very considerate of your feelings and you feeling really good about, I don't know, you feel really good to be in their presence. You also have guidance, see? Oh my gosh, that's, and that's the same thing we have with the spiritualists. You know, it could be someone who's into astrology, astronomy, divin, divin, divination, tarot, oracles. Yeah, same thing. Tar Look at that. Ta I just freaking said it. I freaking said it. I freaking said it. Freaking amazing. And you got authenticity. Authenticity. Uh, authenticity so this person is the real deal this person is like the real sh shebang like this person they don't there's nothing f flaky about them hearth happiness in our hearts and homes very like i said very nurturing very welcoming very inviting very good hostess perhaps um and you have yeah, authenticity yep i have to leave it here because that means something really big so like i'm getting um empress emperor they know who they are they're the queen or the king they have worked the, their way up to be who they are right now. So, you know, like I said, they're well known in their career or in their friendship circle or the, in the family. All right, so I'm going to um, maybe pull one more card. Let's figure out, um, okay, who are they when it comes to love? What what are they like in the love? She's nickel. What, what are they like in the love department? You got reconciliation. So they are probably someone who is very, um, yeah, warm and inviting. They want people to come together. 
they like to see, you know, people making amends. They like, to, they don't like any, they want things to be at peace all the time. They don't like people to have confrontations or fights, you know. So I can see this is like the go-to where everybody goes there for holiday. They go there for Thanksgiving. They go there for Christmas. Um, everybody wants to go to your, your spouse's um, barbecues like you and your spouse's barbecues if you have like a shower they want everybody wants to go to your shower everybody wants to go to your your baptism or whatever whatever you do whatever your yeah whatever your, your cup of tea is everybody wants to come to your your person for our tower reading for spiritual guidance um that's what i'm getting with that reconciliation it's like bringing people together you know uh bringing the pieces together if there's any anything that's unclear this person's gonna help solve that because they I don't know, like I'm getting intelligence here, but spiritual spiritual intelligence as well. Not just like book smart, but also spiritually. Like they have been through an evolution. They have changed. They have transformed. They have been through a lot spiritually. Clingy behavior. So that tells me that when they are in love or involved in a relationship, they, you know, it's like they go all in. You know, they, they're like, you know, so invested in their connection. I don't think, feel like this is anything negative, to be honest. Um, you're like you're getting the you're getting all of them. You're not just getting half ass love with them, and you know clingy could just be like they're very protective over you. Whoever they fall in love with, whoever they're involved with, they they could be very protective, or just very territorial. Not in a in a controlling way, or not in a like, um, you know, you're mine. You can't have any friends. Not like that. It's more like they go all in. They go over and beyond for their their partners. You know, like. It's like, okay, you're mine. I'm going to put a ring on it. Just so everybody knows not to mess with you, you know? And it's like, if anybody does get on your bad side, they would fight your battles. That's what I'm getting with this energy. Because everything else is pleasant. Um, beautiful disaster. So, you know, I feel this energy is saying, basically, you guys, you probably will have tower moments. Only because that's part of the spiritual journey that your person is on. You know, they're still trying to discover themselves. They're still mastering themselves. So they might have a little bit of you know, uh, things to take care of, but they're going to take care of it because they, they're, like I said, hands-on and they're down their spiritual path. So it's like this spirit is going to knock out the kinks, work out the kinks. But beautiful disaster also means that to me, it's like they've been through a lot. So when they, when you guys meet, they're totally, they're not the same, like they, they're not, they're not like the same person they used to be in a previous relationship. It could be that the previous relationship scarred them or tested them or, um, made them vulnerable because they are very vulnerable. They're very um, open, open-hearted. So it could be that the, the past relationship didn't work for them, and now they they have learned from that. So it could be that they are feeling like they just came from a, a crazy storm, and but that that is who it's who that is what made them who they are today. So this is like, you know, a lesson that they've learned in the past and that's probably how they're gonna be able to know not to repeat those same mistakes when they go into a relationship with you. And if you're getting married, then obviously everything has been squashed. Everything has been reconciled um, and put in the on the back burner and they know not to repeat those same mistakes. But I also feel like beautiful disaster is like, you know, a learning curve still. They're not perfect, they're learning. So you guys might have some tower moments that you, you know, you're going to breeze on through. Because you guys, you know, there's a reason why you guys got together. There's a reason why you guys are married at this point. Um, and this person has been through a lot, like I said. So they're going to, you know, figure out how to better communicate or do the work. Intimis, intimately or romantically, physically, whatever they need to do, they're going to be able to do it. Because that, yeah, just, just think of your, your person rising like a phoenix in the love department. It's like, um, you know, they're the empress energy. They want things to feel good with you and with them, within themselves, you know. So if there's any, like I said, if there's any, like, conflict or any disagreements or any confrontations, they, they're going to squash it. Because they, yeah, this is like, I learned what my faults were in my past relationship. I don't want to repeat that. I don't, no, I, now I know to be more attentive to, you know, feelings, people's feelings. Um, if I'm going to be involved with them, you know, so I feel like don't even worry if you feel like this is something that you guys are going to struggle with, like little towel moments. No, I don't think so, because if you think about it, this person knows how to take care of business. And when it comes to the love department, they can't work, they can't function if they're suffering in the, the love department. So everything has to work together. 
and, and that's how they're going to be able to continue doing their work, their purpose, by making sure everything's in alignment and it's squared away in the love department. So, and, and everything else, when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to their hobbies and their their desires, their um, goals, whatever, everything has to be in alignment. It can't just be half-assed, like, okay, I'm, I'm rocking it good, I'm making good money in my when it comes to work, but then in the love department, it's, 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 it's shit. It's like nothing. It's like, it's non-existent. That won't, because remember, this is a water sign, so they need to be able to have that water flowing out, pouring out of their heart, and, and be able to give all in their job. So everything has to be in alignment in the heart space, in the love department. And then you have creative sexual energy. See, this, that's what I'm saying. If there's any kind of... um hardship going on in the romance department they're going to fix this they're going to channel channel and transmute that negative energy into something positive so they'll figure out a way if there's a lack in their in your romance or there's a lack when it comes to you know intimacy they're going to fix it they're going to get creative they're going to make a way to um or they're going to find a way to spice the relationship. They're going to find a way to improve so that everybody's on the same page. And so they can go back to doing the freaking things that they love to do, which is their work, their passions. So don't even worry about anything going left with this person. And if it does, it's not going to be like a dramatic, like, oh my gosh, we got a divorce. No. It's like, okay, well, this doesn't work. How can we fix it? And your person's going to be like, all right, let me stop working right now because I can't function if you're not happy. That's how I feel this is going to go down. So anyway... Wow, that was, that was deep. That was deep. All right, so um, let me pull some letters for you. Who will you marry? Wow, I didn't intend this to go so long. Whew, if you want something more deeper, I do have um, my um, personal readings over on Etsy. All right, let's see. Give me some initials, please. Can I have some initials? Who, who, who is this person? Please help me describe everything here on the table. What might their name be? Okay, let's see. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. We got G O B I N G O. Wow, you got B. Okay. Oh, you got. Oh my gosh. Get out of here. Get out of here. We got the words bingo. Because <laughs> you just need an I. You just need an I. That's crazy. All right. Bingo was his name. Oh, there was a farmer. Had a dog. And Bingo was his name. Oh, B I N G O. All right. This person's name could be Ben. This person's name could be Billy. Betty. Um, they probably love nursery rhymes or, you know, at a young age, maybe their favorite song was bingo. Maybe they play bingo a lot. That's interesting. Um, all right. Bing, bingo, bing, 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 bingo. Oh my gosh. Okay. This person's could be, this person's name could be Chandler or last name is Chandler. Chandler Bing. Get it? Bing, bing. Um, you know, from Friends. What's his real name? Matthew Fox, right? Matthew Fox? I don't know his name. Matthew Perry? No, that's, no, that's the guy from Lost. His name could be Matthew. His name could be something with a B. Chandler or something like that. Um, you also have, let's see. Okay. This person's name could be something with the A as well. Uh, let me see. So Autumn, maybe a female's name. Falzio. Sorry, I'm looking at this, these sides, this side. Okay. Bob. Bong. Oh my gosh. All right. So this person, wow, I feel like this person has an unusual name. What, yeah, what, winning, winning. Okay, so, okay, so their name could be, oh my gosh. Charlie Sheen, something with a ch, ch. Chandler, Charlie Sheen. Winning, winning, I'm getting wing, winning. You have, um, bow, take a bow. <clears throat> Bow Wow? No, let me stop. Maybe they're like dogs. Oh, there was a dog. Who had, it was on a farm. Or had a dog. A bigger was his name. So this person probably has some kind of dog name. You have Bow, like Bow Wow, and then you have the farmer dog for the bingo. So that he can have either have a dog name or he, has a, he or she has a lot of dogs or like some kind of pet name they like to go by that kind of resembles something or, you know, something that you would name a dog, but they also like to go by that pet name or something like that. Or pets. They probably have a lot of pets. Uh, Fabio, Safazio, something like that. All right, that's what I'm getting. <laughs> all right, my friend. Oh, my gosh. I bet you only one letter is probably going to resonate with you out of all these. But, like, again, this is general. So if you want something more personal, do check me out over on Etsy. You have a beautiful day, and thank you for, me, for letting me read for you. You take care. Pile number two. Hello, you chose the pink pile. Thank you so much for being here. You're freaking awesome. You freaking rock. Thank you so, so much for your time. If you're new, please subscribe. If not, thank you for returning. Also, I have playlists 
with many, many pick cards in there. So, yeah. Um, it, okay, so right here, I don't know if you could see, but right here I had my friend's tarot. <laughs> and pile number one, oh my gosh, I, I feel like I need to go back and tell pile number one this. But um, pile, at the end of pile one, we talked about Ch Chandler Bing and Charlie Sheen from, uh, I don't I forget. I forget where they're from. What, what? Oh my gosh. What the heck is the name of the show? I can't think. Charlie Sheen, but he was replaced by somebody else. Somebody new. Eventually, I don't know. He, winning, winning, right? That came out, but also before that came out, Chandler Bing. Um, some kind of dog's name came out for the person that number one is going to marry. And so, and then I come over here, and I'm like ready to get ready for you, pal number two. And this is my friend's tarot. And Chandler Bing, there you go. Look at that. Chandler, Chandler, Chandler Bing Matthew Fox is from Friends. So, pile number one, I don't know, like, I'm ready to use this deck for you. So, I, you know, if you feel like it, check out pile number one, which was a very long reading, and I got really into detail. So, if you feel like this is not your message, or you want a part two to your message, check out pile number one, please, because there's a, too many synchronicities, I'm telling you. All right, so let's dive into your message. All right, pile number two, who will you marry? I'm going to start with... Tarot first. Let's start with tarot first. Let's flip it this way. Just to balance the bow. Okay, who will you marry? Who will you marry? Pile number two. Pile number two. So you chose the pink card. Who will you marry? Pile number two. Who will you marry? Pile number two. Who will you marry? Pile number two. Pile number two. Who will you marry? Okay, that wants to come out. All right, this comes out too. All right. Who are you? Who are you marry? Who are you marry? Pound number two. New people. New message. New energy. All right, let's do this. All right. And bottom of the deck. Oh, this wants to come out. And bottom of the deck, you have the Queen of Cups. And uh, it's a wrap. Forget it. It's it's goodbye. See ya. No, I'm just kidding. All right, you definitely want to check out <laughs> pawn number one because pawn number one. I kept saying the Queen of Cups. I kept saying, hey, Queen of Cups, Queen of Cups, uh, psychic energy, spiritual energy coming through. Um, yeah, I was getting high priestess with uh, the Queen of Cups, and now it's here, Queen of Cups. I'll, sh I'll just show you. I'll just show you. Oh, my stars. You definitely got to check out Pond Number One. Look what's here. Look at that. But wait, I got to show you the synchronicity. Hold on. Oh, my gosh. Wait a minute. <clears throat> oh, my stars. Wait a minute. Where'd it go? Look, look what came out. That is insane. Oh, my stars. And then you got, oh, I got to tell one this. The early weaver of the worlds. And then we got the weaver, the weaving witch. The weaving witch was just here. Oh, my gosh. The sigil witch. All right, anyway, so this person is very good at making magic with their hands. <clears throat> so anyway, um, yeah, this is like a transform. I'm sorry, I don't mean for this to happen, but it's like pile number one. I don't know if you're watching pile number two as well. Pile number two. I don't know if you like to watch pile one because the energies are always some, not always, but sometimes they transfer over to the next pile. So it could be that the person is still watching. So you got two grim reapers. So um, what this tells me is that this person is going through some kind of shift. This, some, you know, they're cutting something out of their life. They're they're ending a cycle. So by the time you meet them. They probably would have, they, you know, they're going to be somebody completely different. But they're going to be the real deal. And they're going to be, yeah, they're going to be completely different. You know, like, let's say you guys are hanging out with all your friends, right? And, you know, oh, wow. They're going to be like, oh, you're dating so-and-so. Oh, you're married to so-and-so. Oh, I remember back in the day we used to get in trouble all the time. We were like, uh, we were like fools just, you know, jumping off cliffs and doing daring stuff. And, 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 and then you're like, what? That's not the the person I married. I don't know who you're talking about. Do we have the same one? Do we have the same Jim or the same uh, Justina? Is this the same person we're talking about? Because the person I know would never ever jump off a cliff without thinking twice. And so I, that's why I feel like when you marry this person, they might have a reputation of you know of something completely different because they went through so much. They went through. They just went through a transformation, or they've been gradually gradually transforming. Uh, ending things, maturing a little bit, because you know maybe this this is the energy that they used to have, or maybe this is what you, they have deep down inside, like you know from the past. Or no, what I'm saying is, 
in hindsight, they're like this youthful person, but they have matured since since then, since their their old daring ways. But um, you're, it's gonna be hard for your people to recognize this new version of your of your spouse because that's not what they are familiar with, you know. But you're gonna know the better version, the more mature version. Um, so anyway, so let me let me. Let me <laughs> oh my gosh, let me let me um. Let me get into this. Like, okay, so definitely check out Ponder One, please do, because there's a reason why all this stuff, is, all these synchronicities are coming out, and I don't plan it this way. So you got the full. So this is like somebody who's very spontaneous, who's freaking fun, um, you know, not afraid to try new things, and it could also it could also be that they, you know, they have such a youthful spirit. They're you know ready to start life. They're ready to you know leave things behind and start fresh you know it can be their bad boys bad boy ways their or the bad girls way go ways or whatever maybe they were so um they were just messed up in relationships like they maybe they they weren't playing fair in old relationships but now they're different and so that's what i'm saying like when people when you talk about them with other people they're gonna be like i don't know what you're talking about because i know back in the day your spouse used to be a player and what happens you know and not saying that your person was a player i'm just saying giving examples so they could be very very um uh, youthful or they can just have like you know that you know that fun side that you will help them help bring out because they probably forgot about it you know they they have transformed they cut something out but maybe with you you're gonna bring out their fun side again but not like the crazy daring fun side it's more like all right let's go let's go across the town and try a new dinner but let's make sure we're home by 10 you know um so it could be that so yeah i feel like there's some kind of transformation happening here for sure um or it, it is already happening um oh my gosh where, where do i start you got the queen of cups that yeah i'm not gonna say pound one anymore because i don't want to like force you to i don't want to like trick you or not trick you but i don't want to like convince you if, if you're not for power one if you just this is power two that's it different energy Queen of Cups, so this person is very passionate. This person is, you know, they probably wear their heart in a sleeve. You know, they're probably, I think they're going through their transformation. That's why you got the Queen of Cups, very spiritual, this person. Very sp spiritual. They probably went through something crazy, and that opened their eyes. And now they're like, you know what? Life is precious. Let me, um, you know, have a different point of view. Let me live life the way I want to, but more, like, maturely like safely because you know i only have one life to live you know so it could be that maybe they had some kind of near-death experience and that totally woke them up and that's part of the transformation that part of the adjustments i guess um you have eight of pentacles they could be in the middle of you know getting look at that audition getting an audition getting the part for something getting a better job getting their degree graduating in some way um, learning, uh, learning what they like, what they don't like, you know, le learning what their purpose is and mastering that. You got, um, three of cups, so this energy, oh wow, okay. This person might have a lot of friends, a lot of family, they might want ch more children, or they probably want children. Um, they probably want a big wedding, or they just want, they like celebrating or be just being around a lot of people. Very, wow, that's interesting, because that also, I'm not going to say it, but yeah, pal one, that was very present. <laughs> Being a lot around a lot of, around a lot of people and just maybe not I wouldn't say people pleasing but just very very friendly and everybody likes this person this is like a likable dude or dudette you got the star so again they're going through some kind of healing some kind of um, you know like metamorphosis but also I feel like this person is very likable and very like I can see this person being in a room and everybody notices this person you know. Like, they're the light of the party, the, cl the class clown, the, the person that everybody goes to for a good laugh. This person is just very, this energy is just very light, you know. Just think of the limelights. This, you know, it's like you, he, you walk in the room and there you go. You have someone, who you just want to gravitate towards them. So I can see a lot of, you know, like this person being a, a beacon of light. A beacon of life. Where it's like, man, you're so refreshing. You're so fun. Man. And, and they all gravitate towards that light of your spouse, in your spouse, and including you, you know? There's something about your, your person that you're going to be like, oh my gosh, where did you come from? Did you come from another planet? Because you're just out of this world. You're so different. And that's what you're going to feel most drawn to, that their unique abilities or the fact that they eat food differently, they talk differently. Maybe they have a different accent. Maybe they, you know, I don't know. They write 
maybe they believe in just walking to work and they never want to drive a car you know like maybe there's just so 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 unique so ele what's it called electric but eccentric just so like i don't know how to explain just like um the planet uranus just so different I, and we did get that with the other card authentic this person is the real deal this person is so like um they don't they it's like sorry not sorry I'm sorry, not sorry for being me. This is me. Take it or leave it. You know, very confident in their own skin. <clears throat> you have the page of cups, so very creative. Again, youthful energy. So this person can be much younger than you, or they just come across like they are um, just, you know, like I said, like, you know, very like, oh, let's have fun. Let's, do, you know, let's explore, you know, that kind of energy. You got the king of swords, and we also, like I said, part number one, we had politics, and it came out twice. So it's almost as if this person is either educating themselves, they're mastering something, they're getting a degree, they're learning about their purpose, they're learning about their skills, they're mastering, they're honing, they're, they're doing a lot of work, and that's why the death card is here, because they're, they're, um, they're, find, they're finding their true north, and they're educating themselves as much as they can so that they can align themselves yeah, yeah, they're, get, they're shedding skin, and now they're in alignment. So, yeah, yeah, and the hangs, oh my gosh. I'm telling you, part number one, that you came out, that came out to the hangs, man. I was saying that the ball of lights, king of swords, like, they, they're just so spiritual, or they're just so, they, they're going through an awakening so much that it's going to be, like, so refreshing by the time you meet this person. You're going to be like, man, I can resonate with you on such a weird level. How do I know you? It, it can be that you recognize this person from another lifetime, perhaps, perhaps. I'm not saying that this is a spiritual counterpart or a soulmate or a twin flame or anything. Because I, I, I want to be careful with how I say that because, um, yeah, I learned that. My, my friend was like, I don't do soulmate twin flame readings because it can be very harming, harmful. And I'm like, you know what? Let me, th let me think about that. And so, you know, I'm like, you know what? There's a reason why she feels that way. So I picked her brain and, yeah, n now I feel like, okay, I'm just going to be very careful how I word things. So um, this can be, like, something very familiar to you is what I'm saying. That's how I'm going to leave it. It's good. It, it's, it feels so familiar. Like deja vu when you come in contact with this person or when you build a life with this person. Um, all right. See, you, yeah, the King of Swords, part one, we got this politics and you got the King of Swords here. So that's, like, this person could be really, you know working their way up the, the social ladder or the career ladder or maybe they are like so like they've been through so much and they're so thirsty for knowledge it's like they're like a sponge they just want to learn they want to absorb everything they want to maybe they want to travel as well wait why do i say that they just want to absorb everything that they can you got medium with dark hair and that's coming out a lot here medium with dark hair who will you marry Panama to? Who will you marry Panama to? Fair complexion. And you got the introvert. Wow, and that was just here. That was just here, the hermit. Yep, that the hermit. So this person could be very, like, mysterious. Um, but I'm getting, not like that, not like secretive. Oh my gosh, I'm, hi I'm hiding something. It's more like, let me observe. Let me process things deeply. Yeah, King, King of Swords. Let me think about it. Let me assess you. Let me see how you fit in my life. Let me see what you're all about, you know? This is like someone who's mastering. They're learning as much as they can. They're absorbing. So that's the hermits, you know? And I feel like they are on a, a, a spirit, like a deep spiritual path. And so they're probably very selective and very careful with who they who they bring into their lives. It's like, are you worth my time? No? Okay, let me keep dating until I find that one. Are you worth my time? Let me figure this out. And they, they take the magnifying glass with the king of swords, the thinking cap. The intuition and they're like hmm i think i feel something with you let me invest in this connection more let me be like the page of swords let me inquire let me get to know you better so yeah making wise decisions going forward because they they've been through the probably the immature daring crazy bachelor bachelorette days and they're, they're done with that they're ready to you know they're ready to be mature and give all they're all in the relationship okay let's see Craft work. Wow, that's really beautiful because that's what I was saying in pile number one. Hands-on energy. Needlework, ceramics, tailor, woodworking, sewer, and seamstress. So this person is like very, it's like fine-tuning here. 
it's um very this precision like the precision pre oh my gosh pre very precise meticulous direct like the queen of swords so you got the king of swords so very professional um very like everything has to be done in a certain way so they're very selective also with who they like i said who they come who they bring into their lives who they bring to their parents who they swap spit with i don't know <laughs> They're like, wait a minute, let me think about this. And, you know, so they might be a little slow going in the relationship department because they want to make sure that this time counts. They don't want to just bring you home to mama and daddy and grandma if they don't feel that it's, it's going to go, it, it's not going to go somewhere. So very calculating. Oh my gosh, wait, 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 I want to tell you. Yeah, look, calculating, you have games here. It takes strategy to play chess, right? And you got 40s. Yep, yep, yep. This is someone who's a little, oh my gosh, that's interesting. This person has been through a lot. That's why they 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 seem so young, but they there's like a the outer shell is much older, or it can be that they have a, a, an old soul in a younger body. Green thumb. That's what I'm saying. I feel that they're hands on. This is like some kind of this is like some kind of like um, I don't know. Like they they're just so careful. You can't just say here I'm gonna plant some trees. Plop. They're like, hold on, let me take some acorns, let me put them in the dirt, let me water them, let me talk to them, let me sing to them, let me make sure there's enough room for it to grow. Okay, come back, rinse, repeat. This person is very calculating, very, very um, intentional with everything. So that's who you're going to freaking marry. That's who you're going to freaking marry. Okay, let's see. Wow, this is so freaking fun. I love this. All right, so let's see. Tell me more. This is my, um, so I was using my Who decks. I have two of them. Occupations and who's I have interests, age brackets, signs, uh, hair complexion. I'm sorry, hair t hair type, thin complexion, all that stuff. Now this one is my which becomes our oracle mixed in with another beautiful creator's deck um, to help you get into the spiritual side of things. Okay, so who is your person spiritually? Pile number two. I discharge. I discharge negativity like smoke rising from a burning bay leaf. Any negativity flows harmlessly away from me. That's what I'm saying. Like if they, yeah, the death card. They're cutting things away that don't serve them. So they're like, is this a waste of time? Probably next, I'm out of here. This is not, you know, for me. And I know that right off the bat. Like they, they just know. They just know. They date somebody. They know it's not going to work. And they don't, they just cut to the chase. And they're like, okay, so, you know, thank you. I had a great time with you. They're very respectful. But also, like, direct. Okay, thank you. I had a good time. Thank you for dinner. You know, um, let's just pay half the... I pay half the bill. You pay half the bill. Thank you so much. And then on to the next date, a week, two two months later. I don't know. So they're very intentional, very strategic. Um, and clearing things away. Like, whatever doesn't serve them, goodbye. Because they have bigger things to do. You have hippie, witch, peace, free spirit, unconventional. See? That's the, that's the freaking fool card. Oh, my stars. That's the freaking fool. That's the fool. See, I'm passionate, so I, I apologize. Well, not, not really. I don't apologize for being me or for being so enthusiastic and, and, you know, passionate about what I do. But, you know, I'm sorry for the F, the freaking, the freaking word, um, if that does bother you. It's just part of my, my enthusiastic vocabulary. It just goes to show how much I love what I'm doing. But, look, fool. Hippie, hippie. This is like... The spontane spontaneity. They do have a fun side. They might uh, put a poker face on. Gypsy witch. Travel, levitation, adaptation. So this person, I feel they're cutting things away. And they're, yeah, I, I don't know if I told you that, but they're, uh, like, all, I don't know if I said it in power one or two, but, um, power one or this power, but it's like they, they're thirsty for knowledge. So they're, they're ready to like, you know, live. They're ready to explore. They're ready to, you know, um, dive into different things. You got the full um, levitation, adaptation, and travel. So they could travel for a living, and that's what I said in Power 1. They could probably travel for for, for fun or they travel for work. Um, and the full card, yeah, going on a journey, spiritual's journey. So it could be a, a hermit spirit, hermit slash fool, fool's journey, where they're, it's like they're going through things physically, but they're also going through, through, through things spiritually. And then you got travel here. So yeah, absolutely. Next one, modern, new age, and hands-on, practical. And that's what I'm getting, Virgo, energy coming through, um, and the hermit. So I'm getting someone who just, they can make anything out of anything, in any situation. Whatever situation they're in, they can adapt to it. And that's what this says, adaptation. Whatever situation that is, you know, uh, presenting, being presented to them, they make the best out of it. 
you know, it's like there's no no use in crying over spilt milk, or there's no use in in you know comfort, confronting something for what you know. That, that, I, that's what I'm saying. Like they're very mature and they're very intelligent and they're calculating. So that's what I'm getting with that practical with the King of Swords. Very very much so. Queen of Swords very meticulous, very careful and precise and direct and honest with their words. They probably talk for a living as well. All right, so I'm gonna leave you with some awesome. You know, give you some of this stuff. So what is it? What are their initials? Power number two. Power number two, what are their initials? Who will you marry? Power number two. Who will you marry? Power number two. Okay. Get J. Okay, their name could be Jake. Their name could be Jake. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes, yes. J-A-K. And then let's say pretend we have an E here. Wait, sorry, it was all backwards for you. So Jake, J A K, and then E E. Um, their name could be Jessica. Their name could be Jerica. Oh yes, look at that. Jerry, Jerry, Jerica. J E R. No, not jerk. Sorry, no. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Jerica. Their name could be Jerica. Just pretend that's an E. J E R I K A or J E R R I C A or J E R I C A or Jessica. Their name could be Kira, Kira, Kevin, Kyron, Kieran, uh, K, sorry, K I R, Kira, Kirk, Kurt, um, wow, I'm getting Keith, Kevin, Rick, Rich, Enrique, oh, Eric, there we go, Eric, Erica, Enrique, um, Kai, Rick. Okay, and yeah, Rick. I'm getting Ricky, Ricky, R Eric, Ricky, <clears throat> Corey. Okay, that's how. Yeah, um, Rich, Dicky, uh, Ricky. That's what I'm getting. Okay, Katie. So strong K, strong R's, and maybe Eric. Throw in an Eric, Erica, something like that. So that's what I'm getting for you. Thank you so much for watching pile number two. Let me know that you chose the pink heart by putting pink hearts in the, in the comment section. And if you want pink, pink cards, freaking awesome. If you want something more deeper, I do personal readings over my Etsy. Hey, what's going on? It's V from V Love and Tarot. Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for joining me for another pick a card. Pile number three, we're going to get into your who. Who will you marry? Who is, it? is that person going to be like? What's he going to be like? She's going to be like. We're going to figure it out. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you can subscribe if you're new. And if you're not, thank you for always returning for some good stuff. Check out my playlist. I'm going to have it in uh, my comment section and my description box. All right. Pile number three, who will you marry? Who will you marry? Pile number three. Pile number three. Okay, you have the lovers. <laughs> yes, bingo. Okay, love it. Who will you marry? The seven of swords. Who will you marry? Pile number three. Who will you marry? You got the Six of Pentacles. Last one. Who will you marry? Pawn number three. Oh, two. Two want to come out. The Nine of Swords and the Two of Cups. All right. Judgment Day. Oh, snap. Judgment Awakening. Yes. Okay. Um, I think this is an interesting pile here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to resonate with even 50%. It might resonate with like maybe 10, maybe 5%. But um, I'm going to explain why I say that. Um, so, uh, hold on, let me meditate a little bit. Let me think about this for a second before I start yapping with the captain. Gosh, it's here again. Okay. Jeez. Oh, snap. 
Okay, this makes sense. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I, I like to clarify just in case. Alright. Interesting. Made up made up my mind. Made up my mind. Okay, I made up my mind. Remind me to say say that towards the end. I made up my mind. Um okay, so pawn number pawn number three, I feel like you're gonna marry somebody who you're going to win over. Um, yeah, this is some, this is a, a loving relationship. I think this person is actually made for you. Like you guys were meant to meet. You were meant to be part of each other's lives. You were meant to, uh, learn from each other, grow with each other, transform spiritually with each other. Um, yeah, go through your awakening. Cause you do, you actually do have, um, yeah, you do have, no, wait, oh my gosh. This is, oh my gosh, this is a tower moment. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, but you're you're meant to you're meant to have some kind of uh, shift and transformation. Um, yeah, ta from tower moment to transformation, from tower moment to um, power to um, change to um, judgment day, because you even have spirituality here as well. So okay, hold on. So the lovers, yeah, you you guys are a mirrored Im image, but you guys went through a lot, whether individually you know through uh, um with other uh relationships previous relationships or even in a past life you went through a lot and then you come together and you're still meant to test each other push each other to be the best that you can be going through some more town moments some crazy times but then it's like you but you guys are like it's like you're you're a jagged oh my gosh you're like jagged a uh, little you're like crushed gems, but you come together and you make a, a big fat masterpiece, a big fat crystal, a big fat gem. So you, I don't know how to explain. It's like two broken pieces coming together and it's a perfect heart. Um, that's what I'm getting with that. Um, and, and, okay, so you, you're going to be, um, man, this is coming so fast and I'm trying to slow it down so I can better explain. You are going to marry somebody who you probably, um, you won, you won them. And I don't mean that in a, I don't mean that like as far as territory goes, like it's not, this is not you marking your territory and you're saying this is mine, my property. It's more like that your person, um, this is so complicated. You're pr yeah, it's complicated. Ten of Wands. I know. I feel the. I feel the burden. I feel the the frustration. But you have a balance here. So okay. And then you have the Two of Cups. So there's a lot of uh, balance. All right. So what? Okay. I'm gonna s speak slowly. Um, I, I, for example, Lisa and Ted are together. Lisa was with Joel. 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 Whatever. So, um, Lisa and Joelle used to have a past, and they were having a nice relationship, but then Ted comes along and kind of distracts Lisa from Joel, and then Lisa starts, um, get, finding more interest in Ted, and then she loses interest in Joel, who she was in a relationship for the longest, and so... Joel just, you know, their chemistry dissipates. It kind of lessens and lessens, and it just wilts away, like these little, this little flower here wilting away. And then she puts more of her intention into Ted. So um, then her and Ted build a relationship. They get to know each other, and then she slowly um, cuts Joel off. And then there you go. Ted wins Lisa over. Ted wins Lisa, you know, because she was probably feeling conflicted. Like, who do I choose? Do I choose Joel, who I built a family with? Perhaps I built a home with? Perhaps I, I got married to him, perhaps? Or do I choose this new person, Ted, who is going to bring me the, the moon, the stars, and, 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 and he's going, he or she is going to, um, you know, really consider my feelings and, and, and love me unconditionally. So then Ted feels like he, he's on top of the world. He won Lisa over. And that's what I'm getting with the Seven of Swords. I won her over. She chose me. That's what it is. You chose me. And you cut Joel out of your life to incorporate me into your life. 
So I, that's why I feel like you, you could be Ted in an instance or you, Teresa, whatever. You're winning somebody over. Someone chose you. And maybe I think that's how you're going to, that's the person you're going to be married to. It's like you were the chosen one and you got to marry Ted or Teresa. Um, and Joel, of course, is feeling bitter about this. Joel's like, what the F? How did you just, you know, you know, where did you come from? You're just, you, Ted, you, you, you're, you're just a knight in shining armor, aren't you? You know, snagging my wife away from me. My Lisa was supposed to be with me and she decided to just go in your direction. So the phone rang. That just tells me, you know, yeah, you, you know, pay attention to the signs, you know. Um, oh my gosh, this is like saying... <sighs> and I'm not going to tell you because I don't want you... I don't want to put this into existence but I have to say this because that's part of my role here as a an energy reader a re he, energy reader um y like I was watching this in the game show the the show called the game with Tia Maori um she's like you no something happens with one of her friends and the guy was like I don't even know if this happened to... It could have been another show or maybe uh, something else. But he's like, you are going to... You're going to um, lose your girlfriend. You're going to... No, you're going to win... Okay, you're going to win your girlfriend how you lost her. Or you're going to lose your girlfriend how you won her. That's what... Okay, so you're going to win... So, Ted... No, no, Lisa... No, 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 Ted. You're going to win your girlfriend how you... No, you're going to lose your girlfriend how you won her. So it's like Ted is going to... You know, he's he feels like he won, right? Seven of Swords. He, yeah, something was, you know, happened here. Lisa decided to choose Ted over Joel, right? And so now Ted's like, Oh, cool, I'm on top of the world. I, I, I won Lisa over. Now she's mine. She chose me. I feel good. I feel honored. But he doesn't realize that he can easily lose Lisa how he won her. How did he win her? He won her in competition. She was living a double life. She was with two people. So he might win her, but he might also lose her how he won her. So in other words, she, Lisa might do the same sh again. She might go be in a relationship, a loving relationship with Ted. And then she, oh, a butterfly. And then go towards the next shiny object. And now start dating Mac. And now he might, now Ted might lose Lisa how he won her. By her choosing, you know, between two people. So anyway, what I'm saying is, um, you might be in a marriage, you know, where the person chose you. But that also, just think about the key word, choice. Choice. Why did he have to choose? He should have had nobody to choose from. It should He should have just been not dating anybody um by the time you guys were in cahoots or getting to know each other he shouldn't have he shouldn't have he or she no it's about lisa right she shouldn't have been married she shouldn't have been dating anybody else there should have been no other relationships no other baggage or nothing like that by the time she met ted she should have nothing to do with joel at the time she met ted right so anyway that's what i'm getting with this so my advice to you is to yeah, pay attention to the signs that the phone rang. And um, look up the, uh, Wayne. Wayne. Okay, there's a reason why that, that the, the phone rang and it says something about Wayne. Like the last name was Wayne. So my advice, that's the way my spirit communicates with me through sounds. But when I screened the call, I said Wayne. So I would say Bruce Wayne, right? What does Bruce Wayne do? He lives, what? What? A double life. And you have two, you got Gemini here lovers so bruce wayne he by night he's one thing by day he's something else so just be mindful of the person you will be marrying you may marry or you may you know come together with going forward because you want to be very discerning but you also want to yeah you want to be yeah you want to make good decisions choices no but you want to um, make sure that this person is the real deal and, and they are who they say they are you know they're Bruce Wayne, morning and night, not just uh, half the day, you know, or whenever he's needed the most, uh, is he Batman. Sorry, what I'm saying is <laughs> Bruce Wayne is Batman by night. 
But he's got to either be Batman all night and all day, or he's got to be Bruce Wayne all day, all night. He can't live a double life. He can't have it like that. Now, there are people who have open marriages, but it's not going to work for everybody. So if that's not your cup of tea, make sure that this person has no ties with their exes. They're not involved whatsoever. This, this is not something that is negotiable. You know, you, you, you don't want this person to be involved at all. It's just you and them and that's it, right? You and him, him, him you and her, whatever. Oh my gosh, wow. It was, that was a lot. So anyway, you have Scythe, Quick Endings, Death, The Unexpected. So this just says, you you know, don't be afraid of this. This is Lynn Armand. Don't be afraid of this. This just says, yeah, when you, yeah, when you get married to this person. Oh, be, no, no, not when, before. Before you even decide to tie the knot, make sure that they have no past. That's going to be creeping up. Make sure they have, like I said, no no exes or, or no nobody that they're dating. Pay attention to your red flags. Do you feel like this person is really being committed to you? And being um, monogamous with you? faithful to you yeah and make sure they have cut all ties with exes or anything like that um so seven of words yeah seven of swords yeah lavender ease relaxation peace of mind whatever um signals cues and synchronicities and messages you receive pay attention to them ease relaxation peace of mind yeah uh pay attention to the signs and do your research if you need to if you need a peace of mind if you're like, man, I don't know if this person's living a double life, this Bruce Wayne life, this Gemini life, I don't know. So let me do some investigation, you know? Let me let me go see how this person acts when he or she comes home. Do they go into the shower right away? Do they hide text messages? Hmm, you know? So really pay attention to everything um, when you're dating this person before you even get to the to the altar. Make sure you really know who you, you're, you're being involved with, who you're, you know committing with com committing to um the, you got six of pentacles so then so then you you know you figure you square this out and then okay i feel like that's just one person's message that's probably like two percent of you that need to hear that now heading towards the the rest of the, the spread here six of pentacles with um nine of swords and two of cups okay okay so Wow, I feel like this is um, part of the number one this first scenario's message, but then this is also in something s s completely separate. All right, so let me let me continue from, from my my earthly mind. Uh, okay, so what I'm saying, my my earth sign mind. I have an earth sign mind. Anyway, I feel like you are um, okay. You take care of business. You know you. Let's say you find out that your person is still, you know, dating their ex or they're still in cahoots, right? You're like, all right, you know what? <sighs> you know, I still love you, so whatever. You know, if you got, if you guys feel like you need to be in each other's lives, whatever. As long as you're not, you know, going, pa you know, you're not crossing the line, right? So then you like, you find a balance. Okay, you can be happy. You can be still talk, talk with your ex, maybe because you have kids, or maybe because you guys have a business together, whatever. So then you, you find peace of mind within yourself. You know, you trust your person. But then, you know, maybe months down the line, you're like, wait a minute, did I make a bad decision? Did I make the right decision? Oh my gosh, what, what was I doing? What was I thinking? Marrying this person, knowing that they're still connecting with their ex. What? What the freak? And so now you're like having second thoughts. You're, you're, you're paranoid or you're not paranoid. What I'm saying is all these, um, yeah, paranoia, This, this these feelings are are running through your mind and at nighttime you can't sleep you're just anxious and you're, you're totally regretting what you have decided on what you have negotiated on with your person like no no lisa you can't be with ted and joel you know but then you decided lisa no you know lisa was like you know but yeah i just want to be with joel because i just want to talk with him because we have kids together dogs together and then joel uh, ted's like all right, you can talk to Joel all you want. Just make sure you don't cross the line and it doesn't get anything. It doesn't go deeper than that. You know, just cordial, you know, t friendship, whatever. Just be friends, be cordial. Uh, or business partners, whatever. But then Ted regrets letting, or not letting, but being okay with Lisa still talking to Joel. <sighs> so then now he's in a pickle because he's already married at this point. So yeah, he's like getting all these thoughts and now it's, it's stressing him out. It's weighing on him. And he's holding it shut. He's holding it tight. He's like, I don't know what... 
I don't know what to say now. I already got married to you. And we already had this agreement that you can talk with your ex. And now she's like, well, but what? You, you said that we can, you know, now they're arguing about it. Maybe you guys will be arguing about it. And you're trying to go back on your word. And yeah, because you realize that maybe they're getting closer. Or maybe that's what you feel. Maybe it's not the case. Um, separation, loss, emig emigration, ten of wands. So maybe you feel like now you're losing Lisa back to Joel. <laughs> so now you're like, crap, like why did I decide on this? And so it's in your mind, it could be in your mind, or you can just be, you know, worried that you're going to, like I said, you're going to lose your, your, your girl, your, your wife, how you want her. Um, so then I, I, comp I, I uh, clarified the nine, nine of swords, and I got sweet fennel, tolerance, understanding, compassion. See, you put your feelings aside to say, okay, Lisa, you can still talk with your, your ex, Joel, because I know that you love me and you chose me. But now you're like, crap. I'm kind of putting my foot in my mouth. I shouldn't have said that. What if they fall in love again? What if she does the same thing? What if she chooses him over me again? You know, like, ah. So, or what if she chooses, a, has to make a choice again and she ends up choosing her ex over me? So then, you know, you have an understanding. You talk it out and then you guys come together with, with a better understanding. And we talk about that better understanding. And you're like, no, I'm not going to tolerate you talking with your ex. No. So now you have to make a decision. Are you going to continue talking with your ex or are you going to choose me and only me? That means no more wavering, no more having your cake and eat it too. You can't just talk with your ex knowing that you chose me over him. No, I can't, tr I can't trust you. You know, they have to have some kind of um, boundary, you know. So then you make this work and then Lisa knows her place. She knows that she can't have a cake and eat it too. She can't be going back and forth with person that she didn't choose, she chose you, Ted, right? Now you come to an agreement and now she hears you, she's respecting your wishes because you feel like, you could feel insecure if you want, if you want to say that, or you can just feel like, no, I, no, I can't, I can't have you with your ex because you chose me over him, no. <laughs> and so then you guys make a decision and she's like, all right, you know what? You're gonna win. I feel that's what's happening in Seven of Swords. It's like winning and losing. You know, you're winning again if you're Ted. You're winning again, Ted. You're, yeah, see, motorcycle. You're winning. And now get on your, your high horse. Get on your, your motorcycle with your Lisa girl and run the opposite direction because Joel might want Lisa back, just so you know. But um, I, I, I feel that as long as you're having that open line of communication, you're, this marriage is going to work. As long as, you know, if you're Lisa, you know, not to step over those boundaries of going back to Joel and flirting with him and all that stuff. Wow, this was pretty, pretty intense. So then, um, yeah, so that, you know, that understanding or you have the fact that you have to cut your ex out of your life might feel a little daunting and saddening because you have such history. But in the, in the end, it's going to be so, so, so much better for your relationship. It's going to, you're going to feel like, your person's going to feel so, so confident and secure with you because you decided to cut ties with the past. So, um, all right, made up, say, made up my mind. I made up my mind. So you got to make up your mind. If you are Lisa, you can't have your cake and eat it too, not with your, your, your marriage partner, not with your, that partner that you're going to be marrying. Or if you're Ted, um, make a decision. Do you, are you going to be okay with your, your person still talking to the ex? If not, make it known before you tie the knot. So that you don't have this Ten of Wands and Nine of Swords energy just lingering or you know over your head, over your heart. So make up your mind. What do you want before you tie the knot with this person? Um, you got... Um, wait, hold on. Awakening here tells me... Uh, yeah, t little tower moments. You know, and that could be... Crap, I have to make a decision. I can't be with my... I can't talk with my ex. Not even to talk about business stuff. If it is, it can just be like, you know... Um, like it has to be very cold like the night the, the king of swords the king of swords it has to be cold communication where it's just like text here and there um nothing like you know intimate no having dinner no drinks over talking about business stuff because that's so it's too romantic or too intimate it has to be very cold are you gonna go pick up the, the dog tonight no okay are you gonna go uh file a taxes for us today no yes okay you know that has to be very direct um, if you're going to be okay with your person speaking with their ex again, make sure that they know, your person knows before they get married to you that you are not okay with them having those intimate, you know, meet up, meetups with your ex, with their ex, sorry. 
So um, yeah, so yeah, suspicious. The 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 uh, up the downside of the King of Swords is suspicious, distrustful, malicious. See, that's what you're probably feeling. Like, oh my gosh, I can't trust Lisa. I can't trust because she might choose her ex back over me. Ah! So you 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 know, make up your minds. What do you want? Um. So yeah, two of cups coming together, having those meet the the, the common. Uh, having a common ground, deciding on what's best for this relationship before you get married. You, and then if you do that, you have your towel moment. You cutting out um, this ex of yours, you know, on an intimate level. Like no, like I said, no, no, you know, meetups at the park to go looking at, at each other's eyes to talk about whatever. No, because that can lead to something else. If you, especially if that person, if your person knows that the ex still wants them back. Um, so then I clarify the awakening. With unexpected income. And I feel like this is a transformation, a spiritual transformation. Um, it's like it's going to help your person that you're marrying uh, level up because they are leaving the past behind and now focusing on you. Improvements, work bonus, small sum of money. Now things are going to start looking up for you guys. It's going to start improving because you guys had that, you know, heart to heart conversation. Uh, you have the star healing is going to take place. And then you have um, cinnamon. Passion, protection, spirituality. Yes, so now you guys are in alignment and now you have protection over your connection. So now nothing can pierce through it. Nothing can try to uh, wave a shiny butterfly, a shiny object or butterfly for, for your person to be like, oh, what's the next thing coming in? No, now this person is focused on you only. Freaking awesome. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Um, so that is who you're going to marry. You're going to marry, oh my gosh. You're going to marry somebody. Wow, I, we were supposed to be talking about the, who they are to the core. Um, <laughs> but we talked about the whole situation here. So let's go back to the who. Um, who is this person? Please help me describe their, their names, their initial. Spell the name for me. Please, thank you. L. C. E. I said Lisa, right? I said Lisa. This is coming out. Look at that. L. E. Pretend this is a soft C, like ceiling, celery, and then you have the A. So think of this as Ace or Lisa, L-E-C-A. Like just think of it as someone spelling their name in a, in a unique way, L-E-C-A, Lisa. I'm telling you, um, this person's name could be, uh, oh my gosh, Amy, Cal, Caleb, yeah, Caleb. Oh, the phone, call, someone called. So Caleb, look, you got call here. So call, the name could also say Bruce. Bruce, oh wow, you have the C here. C-E, C-E. So Bruce or Wayne, Calla, Willow, um, Mac. Mac. Um, Matt. Amy, Caleb, Ace, Lisa. Lionel, like some kind of like L C C, yeah, something with the A C L E, something like that. All right. Oh, and we also got T. I told you Ted, some kind of Ted here. We do have the E here, Ted, Ted, <clears throat> Ted. So tech. Okay. So just yeah, you know, um, have that heart to heart conversation with your person and let them know that you're not okay with them having midnight talks with their exes. No, none of that. And if, if so, then you can all have a conversation together. <laughs> that makes you feel, you know, more comfortable. So that makes you feel like you can trust your person more. Um, confident? Yeah, you want to feel confident in this connection. And that's how you're going to feel if you have those conversations. Okay, who is this person you're going to marry? Pile number three. Who is this person? you got dark complexion. <clears throat> who is this person you're going to marry? Fire sign. Let's see, did that come out? You got a lot of uh, air here. You got the lovers. That's the Gemini. You got the, all the um, the swords. You have the King of Swords. You have the Seven of Swords. You have the Scythe. That's a lot of air. They could be an air sign, or you are um, the fire sign. You have um, the confident lion. You got the Ten of Wands, and you got the fire. So they can be air and fire here in your chart, in this, in your charts, or their chart. Air with a little bit of fire, or maybe that's just the energy they're bringing. Beauty and fashion, so this person could be very well kept. They know how to dress well. They probably look very appealing. They probably are, are into social media, or that's probably how you meet them, or that's maybe just 
how you guys communicate because we do have the lovers, the Gemini, so maybe you could do a lot of communication digitally. Tan complexion. Wow. So we got dark to tan complexion. Okay. So, um, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. If this resonates, freaking awesome. If not, freaking awesome. It wasn't your story, but I do have pick cards. Um, you know, if you need, have any questions or anything, let me know. I do have personal readings also if you want to check me out over on Etsy. And I'll see you next time. Much love.